My boyfriend wants to marry me so that he can get his green card. What should I do? Disclaimer, it's not my story time. I said I'm on Instagram. Okay, this is crazy. My boyfriend and I met two weeks ago. We met through Hinge, and after two days of talking, he asked me out. I quickly said yes. We were super compatible. He's a model, and I'm a model. I'm an actress, and he's trying to be an actor. So things just seem perfect. Oh yeah, and he's really, really hot. We went out to lunch and talked for four hours. The entire four hours, we just laughed and had such a good time. We talked about everything. Our families, our values, our morals. It was honestly the most refreshing conversation I've had on a date ever. Most men just talk about themselves. And he asked me so many questions. After the date, we spent every single day together. We even went to Disney and it was so fun. While we were at Disney, he kissed me for the first time. And he said that he would love to marry me. Or to his my boyfriend wants to marry me so that he can get his green card. What should I do? Disclaimer is not my story time with me on Instagram. He finally kissed me when we were in Disney. And that's when he told me that he would love to marry me. At first, I was very flattered. But then he said, wouldn't you want to marry me? And I said, I mean, I don't really know you. And he said, we'll get to know each other. Don't worry. After that, we spent every single day together. At the time, he was living with his roommate and he didn't really like her. So he would come over to my apartment almost every single day and sleep there. He would go to Air One and buy all of my groceries, come over and cook for me. Every single day, he made us amazing food. We'd watch movies together. And we We'd help each other with all our work stuff. I felt like I was falling in love with him and I'd only known him for a week at that point. That's around the time that he told me he couldn't stand his roommate anymore. And he asked me if he could just stay with me for a few weeks. I told him yes, but that he had to help me with the rent. And of course he said yes. So this man moved into my apartment after one week of knowing each other. I mean, am I going crazy? Part three is up. My boyfriend wants to get married to me so that he can get his green card. What should I do? Disclaimer is not my story time. I said I'm on Instagram. He moved in a week after we met. Everything was going great. He helps out with the bills, does all the cooking. He buys all the groceries and basically does everything for me. He even takes care of my dog, does my laundry. I mean, he's everything I've ever asked for. And we have such a good time together. We watch movies every single night. We go out to dinner and hang out with friends. And he's so funny and makes me laugh so much. Fast forward another week. This is when he says that he really does want to marry me. I told him that I would love to marry him too, but that we don't know each other yet. And he said the L word. And I said it back. That's when he said that the only way he could stay in the country with me was if we got married. And that he had already looked into other possibilities, but that was the only one. I told my parents, but they freaked out and told me I shouldn't marry him. All my friends think that he's just trying to use me, but I don't think so. I really do believe this man loves me. I mean, he does so much for me and really cares for me. So I need you guys to help me think of ways to put him to the test. How can I know that he's faithful and that he really loves me and isn't using me? What should I do? Am I the asshole for refusing to dye my daughter's hair because her school complained? My daughter, 15 female, dyed her hair reddish brown for her birthday. The school has a dress code that specified natural hair colors only. Her natural hair is black and I didn't think it was much of a change and neither did her hairdresser. But during a parent-teacher meeting, a teacher said the hair didn't meet dress code. I said the color grows out of people's heads, so why was it out of dress code? She then told me it's clearly not her natural color. I shot back tons of her students that had blonde hair and highlights when clearly natural brunettes. She claimed they looked like they could be blonde, but my daughter's hair was supposed to be black. She's also Asian. Am I the asshole for refusing to dye my daughter's hair because her school complained? She's Asian, so it's pretty racist to say she can't dye her hair, and I brought it up with the principal. He agreed with her, saying it was against dress code. I saw a ton of white kids in her class with obviously brown hair that dyed it blonde. And even red, but no one said anything. They want me to darken her hair so it looks natural. This went on until the end of the school year, and I contacted the superintendent several times, but she never got back to me. It's almost the start of school again, and I got an email from the principal reminding me my daughter's hair is only allowed black. She still has reddish brown and doesn't want to dye it back. Story time about my extremely creepy neighbors. So a little background information, I was 12 years old and I was in 6th grade. And my family and I lived in a really small town where everyone knew everyone. But our new neighbors had been building their house next to us for the past 4 years. And finally when they were done with the house, this house was huge. I mean probably because there were like 8 people moving into the house. There was the mom, the dad, 4 kids, and their grandparents. So like eight people. But I was super excited because I was like, okay, this is awesome. I get to meet some new friends. But after two weeks of not seeing anybody playing in the backyard or anybody on the school bus, I started to think that their family was super fucking weird. And everyone in our neighborhood liked to gossip. And everyone was saying how they barely see the people who had just moved in. So my mom decided to take one for the team and make some brownies, take them over to the house. And I ended up going with her. So we go up to the house, we knock on the door. And one of the kids came and opened the door, but the dad ran over and grabbed him like for part two part two about my extremely creepy neighbors 
So like I said, my mom and I took some brownies over there and one of the kids opened the door and when he opened the door, he had a bunch of bruises all over his body. The dad came running over and ripped his son from the door and slammed the door in our faces and all you could hear was him screaming at his son. So my mom and I went to walk away before the door opened and he was like, sorry, my son knows better than to open the door to strangers. So he took the brownies and then I asked him if I could have a sleepover with one of his daughters and he was super hesitant at first, but he said that I could only have a sleepover with her if it was at my house and not theirs, which my mom was completely completely fine with anyways because she thought that it was a little bit weird that his son had bruises covering his whole body. So that night when she came over to sleep over my house, I asked her how her brother got all those bruises all over his body and she said that he just fell down some stairs. But after that we became best friends and we would literally hang out like five times a week until the one day I knocked on their door to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. Like for part three. Part three about my super creepy neighbors. So like I said, I became best friends with their daughter, but the one day I went over her house to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. And when I asked when she would be back, he was like, she went to go live with her mom, so probably never. Which was super weird because she never mentioned that she had another mom. So fast forward two months, my family and I are sitting around the fire pit when we hear someone scream help. But we weren't sure if that's what we were actually hearing because it was so quiet. And then all of a sudden we heard someone banging on my neighbor's basement door. You know those metal doors that people usually have outside of their house that lead down basement steps? Yeah, well that's where the banging was coming from. So my dad hopped over the fence to see if that's where the screaming was coming from also. And then not even a minute later, my dad hopped back over the fence and it looked like he saw a ghost, but he ran inside, called 911. Because I was so young, the only thing my parents told me about that whole situation was that the girl that I was friends with was still alive and her parents were keeping her in the basement along with two of her other siblings. But then we also found out that they weren't even her real parents. They were kidnapped at the hospital when they were born. I think my boyfriend was or is in an incestuous relationship with his sister. I know this sounds ridiculous, but listen before you call me insane. I have dated him for a year. He's Italian and I'm an American student in Rome. Looking back, there has been signs even early on. He's 25 and she's 21. I'm an only child, so I don't have personal reference. I took all of this as cultural at first. On one of our first dates, we were talking about our families and he showed me a picture of his sister and raved about her beauty. She is actually gorgeous. She's a classic Italian beauty and very chic. I was jealous of her then, but I had no idea where this was going to go. I've only been around her a handful of times, but she's made it very clear that she does not approve of this dating. She's icy, distant, and hostile. She has said in front of me that he should have been with an Italian. She speaks several languages, including English, but every time I try to talk to her in English, she replies in Italian. You are in Italy. Speak Italian. She once told me that he'll be gone soon. My boyfriend is openly very affectionate with her. He dances with her and whispers in her ear, kisses her cheek and the side of her mouth, hugs her closely. Every time I've seen them together, he's brought her a nice gift. People here are generally affectionate, but everything combined is off. Once, at a family dinner, I was helping his mom with the food and he and his sister went out on the patio. I looked out and she was sitting on his lap. What sister does that? I also have seen her caress his bare chest at the beach. This same time at the beach, he carried her in the water with her legs wrapped around his waist and his hands were practically on her ass. If they did this when they thought I couldn't see, what do they do when they're really alone? He's also gotten into a physical fight with her boyfriend, but I'm not sure what it was over. Earlier tonight, my feeling got a lot worse. He never leaves his phone sitting around, but he did this time. He got a message from her and I looked over. She said, my heart is yours, my king, and we were made for each other. I left without telling him. He blew up my phone, but I have no idea what to say to him. This has been my best relationship, but this cannot be normal, can it? I am sick to my stomach and feel mortified thinking about this. Am I the asshole for speaking to my Italian girlfriend's rude Italian-American family and embarrassing them? For a little backstory, due to my dad's job, we lived in Italy for three years when I was younger, so I speak Italian almost fluently. It's been a while, so I've lost some of it. Recently, I started dating a girl. She's great and I love her so much. I met her family a few nights ago for dinner. She warned me that the male side of her family is very big into being macho and detesting the boys the women date and are very big on taking pride in their Italian ancestry. I think besides the grandfather, however, they were almost all born in Bergen County, New Jersey, but whatever. It's nice to take pride in one's heritage. So long story short, at dinner they kept making jokes at my expense. I honestly would not call it bullying, just things about my height, beard, shaved head. They tried to make fun of my IT job too, but stopped once I told them my income. It was overall not a bad experience, but a not so pleasant one either. Anyway, her older brother kept pushing things, giving me exceptional amounts of shit for playing lacrosse in high school. Apparently, it's a sport for prissy rich kids and not manly like football or baseball. He ended his rant by saying, hey, we're just a big Italian family. We're allowed to tell it how we see it. And all of the family except my girlfriend laughed. So I, for the next minute, responded to everything they said in Italian. My girlfriend buried her head in shame. The grandfather laughed and everyone else kept looking at each other confused before telling me that they didn't speak Italian. I replied, then don't use your Italian heritage as an excuse to behave poorly when you can't even speak the language. They got mad, but the grandfather told them all that I was writing to be quiet. My girlfriend isn't mad. She was ashamed that her family dug so deep into me, not about my response. 
I think the grandfather likes me, but word from my girlfriend's sister is that all the men are furious. They think I'm a smartass and I disrespected them in their masculinity in an unforgivable way. So, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for expecting my partner to let my dog out while he was on staycation? My 36 female partner, Tommy, 36 male, was on staycation last week, Monday through Wednesday, meaning he had five days off. He was home all day and maybe left the house once or twice to get food, but that was it. I have a dog, Spud, I got before we got together and they adore each other. Since Spud is my dog, all his care and bills are my responsibility. Tommy does nothing to care for my dog aside from cuddle, but that's a two-way street. Anyway, Spud is normally home alone about nine hours each day and I do things to keep him occupied. Sometimes I hide treats.